मैम वन स्टेप आए दीपिका जी फर्स्ट स्टेप आए दीपिका लाइट दीपिका जी हाँ थैंक यू या या कोई सोलो या दीदी का होल्ड है होल्ड है अच्छा तुम्हें भी खेलते हैं चलो खेलते हैं राइट 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 इसका खेलते हो दीदी का जी दीदी का ही खेलते हो metamorphosed from a beautiful face to a powerful voice and i think it's clear that work has been in love with her through the entire process are bolo yaar for me she perfectly embodies and exemplifies what home is going to try to convey an empowered woman is one who makes her choices and i think that the kavya made all the right one my question to you is what does freedom of choice mean to you as a woman uh hi everyone good evening <laughs> um i think just to put it very very simply uh and i was saying this uh, earlier someone was asking me um i think it very simply boils down to being the person that you want to be you know uh i think i grew up in in a family where there's me and a sister and my mom and my my father's the only male person in the house and uh, all of us have a voice you know we if we had an opinion we were allowed to share uh, you know my parents never said oh you have to or my father never said oh you know you have to do this and you have to do that um so i think stemming from that uh, i've always as a child been allowed to to voice my opinion or to just be the person that i want to be um and i think that's when i at least personally feel truly empowered when um when you're not caged you know when you're not when you don't succumb to expectation you know when you speak your mind or you do the things that you want to do and you do the things that make you happy yeah thank you and now for the man of the moment Come on, wait. Come on. My choice. 
For a man who has moved seamlessly, and I must say this successfully, from art house cinema to commercial blockbuster, <laughs> with his trademark crazy, cool, and candor, Homie does know what it's like to live life on his own terms, so I'm not at all surprised that the title of this movie is my choice. Homie, my question for you is, tell us a little bit about your creative journey behind this film. Um, elaborate on the what, where did it go from the idea to fruition? What were the unique challenges in conveying a singular thought through 99 minutes? See, firstly, this uh, film wasn't my choice. <laughs> I read about it being that I had to make it because Deepika had given the pledge saying I will do an initiative where Homie will have to direct it. Uh, but we... Oh, I, I thought it was the other way around. <laughs> Fool you guys. I have to do the film because you were directing it. And you know how I always go with your vision and... No, but it was a creative collaboration between Deepika and me and uh, one thing we were very clear was we didn't want to make a fictional story in two minutes. We wanted to use uh, real women, empower women, and we wanted to be very organic. Kelsey Kambata, who's written the words, I think they're extremely powerful words. So we were just ideating, and then finally he came back with the with what he had written. We we were disgusted. We tweaked it ever so slightly, but um, then we called in the 99 women and. Uh, we didn't tell them what they were doing and they were extremely sporting about it and they just all landed up and once they were in front of the camera I told them you can do whatever you want but this is the line that's going to come on your when, you, when we see you this is what the line is going to be so process that and express yourself how you want and I found when initially it's, if you're not an actor you, have, you feel a bit shy about being in front of the camera but I find, so I told them, if you don't want to do anything, don't do anything. And when you tell someone that, they do everything. <laughs> so, I wanted to, I was like, okay, we just want you for three minutes each, now you can go. Sure, it'll work. It'll work. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so it worked out very well. I think it, it's, it's a, like I said, it's a beautiful piece and we were very uh, conscious of not letting the visuals take away from it, from, from the words. And uh, I think this whole thing of moving black and white portraits was what we wanted to do to just enhance and lift what was written. So I can keep talking, so I think I'll stop now. Fair enough, homies. You could stop. Um, it's like all of us, like one woman, no? See, it was. It, okay, let me tell you the truth. It was 100 women. But I liked, I liked the idea of putting 99 in and then they said, why not 100? And I said, because God said she was busy. Um, according to the three of you, and, and this is in any order, we've experienced this journey. What, according to you, is the single most defining attribute in identifying an empowered woman? Homi, you want to start first? I think uh, what the Tika said earlier, just a, a woman who lives on her, I mean, it's, it's a woman who lives on her own terms. And uh, ha is brave enough in a world which is unfortunately not equal, which is unfortunately, unfortunately extremely regressive. I mean, it's sad that today we have to sit here and talk about gender equality in 2015. It's like a joke, but we do. Um, so, I mean, any woman who breaks all that and really doesn't give a shit about that and still lives on her own terms, like Deepika, like Sangeeta, and definitely like my over-empowered wife. <laughs> um, I think that's that's the sign of Okay, so, yeah. Sanita, what about you? What do you think is the most defining attribute for a woman? I think it would be, again, more or less similar to what I said earlier, where I think uh, to be the person that you want to be, and I truly believe that you can only achieve that when you have, when you have firstly accepted yourself for who you are and what you are, with all your pluses, minuses, your, your flaws, you have to first love yourself and accept yourself for the way you are to then be able to go out there and say, you know what, this is who I am and this is what I stand for. Very true. My last question, Homi, and this is the last question. 
Yeah. Yeah. I have you here for the evening, so you're on my side. Right um, as a lot of one of the things that really hit me when I started Empower, and I think all of us have role experience with the people saying that why are you doing this? It's it's very it's very urban. Vogue is a very urban brand. Isn't this something that is of more relevance than you in India? My question to you all is, as urban professionals, a filmmaker, a corporate, an actress, a journalist, a media person, what can all of us do to support empowerment in a way big or small? What do you think we can do? Because honestly, the problem, the value of human rights is as prevalent in urban India, probably even more than it is in rural India, and we know that now. Um, what do you think all of us in this room can do to weave the fabric of empowerment? I think it starts with uh, awareness, which is what this is about. I mean, firstly, we all have to be aware and on the same page. After which you can start, you know, I mean, the fact that in uh, a modern society, in urban India, the fact that we're still experiencing this in a workplace, we still have domestic abuse, social inequality, gender inequality, it's, it's, so I think after the, uh, I mean, it's an awareness that needs to be created and after that, I guess, laws have to be put into place and have to be actually followed through with. I mean, that, that is what the, the general thing would be to do, but, yeah, something else. <laughs> Jack, I think there's, there's, it stems from a lot of things, but I probably education, uh, yeah. right? So, yeah. One, two, three, let's go. Thank you.